I'm a former, or still consider myself a hepatologist, which means you treat liver disease. So it kind of warms my heart to hear him talk about liver disease. Um, but it doesn't warm the heart of my constituents to talk about inflation. One of my constituents said, the President Biden should come live where real people live. If their prescription for high fuel prices is that someone drives an electric vehicle, they have no understanding of the lives of those people whom I represent. Folks don't drive 15-year-old pickup trucks because they don't want a new car. They, can't drive 15, they, they don't drive new cars because they can't afford a new car. And high gas prices has made it even worse. High utility prices, high grocery prices. So inflation has hit them. So when the title comes out, the Inflation Reduction Act, of course, everybody's encouraged. Except, as previously noted, uh, the Wharton School of Business says that it actually increases inflation for the couple, couple, couple of years. The CBO says it has a negligible effect one way or the other on inflation. Bottom line, it does not decrease inflation. In fact, I go back to that uh, current inflation state we're in. Uh, remember the American Rescue Plan par passed on a partisan basis. I now call that the American Recession Plan. And this could be the American Recession Plan 2.0. And if it does drive us into a recession, uh, it will decrease inflation because people won't have the income by which to pay for that, with their, that which they have to buy. Now, by the way, why do I say that? Well, 50% uh, of the book value tax is on manufacturers. We are in an international jobs war. Countries around the world, particularly China, are subsidizing manufacturers to move there, and they subsidize them in a variety of ways. I would love to be pure, free market, my gosh, let's get government out of everything. And we're losing the jobs war. And Congress saw that we were losing the jobs war and began giving credits, like we did in the CHIPS bill, for manufacturers to return. Now, the left is looking at this and saying, hmm, those manufacturers, we've had an increased number of manufacturing jobs. It's been going pretty well. They've been taking care of that which Congress has used to incentivize them to come back and to hire more Americans. But we don't like that. We're going to pay more. We're going to make them pay more. Now, the National Association of Manufacturers says that it will kill 200,000 jobs here in the U.S. CBO says it will decrease investment in manufacturing. If you want to lose a manufacturing war, this is what you do. But if you want to win, you don't do it. And I would say that Republicans want to win that, and this bill shows that Democrats wish to lose. Let me mention one more thing not commented on yet, the, the climate impact. Um, now, the bill says that they are going to reduce emissions since 2005 by 40 percent. Now, what they don't tell you, now that has not been independently verified. One organization said it's more like 35 percent. What they don't tell you is that we've already reduced emissions since 2005 by 17 percent. We're halfway to their goal. Under current law, we're scheduled to reduce emissions to 34 percent by 2030. So we're almost there, and the improvement is marginal. But they're only speaking about U.S. emissions, not global emissions. And so since initially, at least, they're going to be driving manufacturing in Asia, particularly China, to be producing the batteries and other things that come here for their EVs, we could have global greenhouse gas emissions get worse. Now, if they really want to tout the climate benefits, then they should come clean as to what their analysis is and why are they not also including the increased emissions that will occur in other countries because of this policy. There's more we could talk about, but perhaps you have questions, so I yield. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Uh, for some Democrats say that Republicans should vote for this package if they care about deficit reduction. Um, the you want to cut them? Go ahead. Anybody would Republicans support this package if it didn't have any new government spending and it just addressed deficit reduction? Then I'd say no. I'm sure others would have comments, but let me point out that they say that we're reduced by 200 to 300,000, 200 uh, billion dollars. Okay, our economy, uh, that's about 0.8 to 1.2 of our nation's GDP every year. They're going to reduce that over 10 years. It is going to be less than a fraction of you know, 0 0.04, 0 0.4% of our, 0.04% roughly, 0 0.08 uh, of our nation's GDP. Perfect. What's that? If things go perfect. If things go perfectly. Um, now, and then the debt and deficit, this will be a total rounding error. So if that's what they're using to justify, and if that's their strongest argument, it's a pretty weak, strong argument. And then my follow-up is, do you think Democrats truly care about reducing the deficit, or do you think they care 
it, or this is a way to justify billions in new government spending for things that they want? I don't think they care, and I think they're only trying to get a fig leaf to justify billions of new spending. 